I'm Ryan Samansky, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. And today, we're on board the Sloop of War USS Constellation, which was the first museum ship I worked on all the way back in 2006. We're going to see how much I remember about the gun drill for one of these 8-inch chambered shell guns. These are early predecessors to the 16-inch rifles on New Jersey, and uh, they, the drill I'm going to put our collections manager, Elena Nolan, and our store manager, store manager Ken Newman, through, uh, is basically identical to the gun drill that would have been done on ships throughout the entire age of sail. Uh, normally, an 8-inch gun like this would have a 14-man gun crew plus a ship's boy, or powder monkey, running ammunition from the magazines to the gun. The guns on board Constellation today are not made out of iron like they would have been. All of those guns were melted down during World War I as scrap metal for that war effort. Uh, so all of the ones on board are fiberglass replicas, which were funded by donors like you guys. So, the first command in a gun drill is silence. Man the starboard number nine gun. On a Super War like Constellation, there would be ten guns lined up on each side. So I am saying silence. There are 14 guys around each of these ten guns. There is a lot of noise. You need to be able to hear my commands. So I'm quieting everyone so that they can hear me. Uh, and I'm telling the man the starboard side number nine gun. So each gun has its own crew. I'm telling the number nine crew to come to me, and I'm telling them to come to the starboard side. Because broadside ships would only tend to fight in one direction, there was a single gun crew that manned both the starboard and the port number nine guns. We would only be engaged on one side at a time if the captain knew what he was doing. If something goes horribly wrong, then I have to take half of my gun crew and put them on the other side. A ship like this may have 319 crew members assigned, but it takes up to 150 to maneuver sails up above, so realistically we've got less than half of them manning the guns down here. The next command is going to be to run in the gun. Typically when we fire the gun, it would recoil back in. But the first time we load it, we've got to bring it in so that we can actually access the muzzle and load it. Battleship New Jersey's guns are loaded from the breach, uh, but Civil War era artillery like Constellations tends to always be loaded uh, from the muzzle, like earlier guns. So we have rigged up a block and tackle to the back of the gun, uh, and this is a two part command. Action tells you guys to lean forward and get ready to grab the line. And then on the command haul, you're just going to lean back and hold. You are not going to walk backwards with it, or you run into all the guys behind you. Now, obviously, with this tackle, as the gun comes back in, you might have to step back a little bit to get out of the way. But in general, and when we use this, these same commands on other actions, you're keeping your feet flying. Action, haul. 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 We want a two blocker here. Action, haul. And one more time, action, haul. All right. So, at this point, we've got the muzzle of the gun accessible. So my next command is to serve, vent, and splotch. Can I get one of you guys on each side? So the first time firing, this wouldn't really be an issue, but if we had just fired the gun, there could be embers in there from the last time we shot. Uh, so we're going to swab it out with the giant Q-tip. 
the sponge. Uh, typically, this would be dumped in a bucket of water and then run down the barrel. On older guns, you might do this once every shot. By the Civil War, they tended to only do this once every uh, three shots. So I'm going to hand this to you, and each of you should have one hand on it while it's in front of the muzzle of the gun. They're only having one hand in front of it because uh, these guns tend to explode. Um, one time on USS Princeton, the explosion killed the Secretary of the Navy. Uh, so, by only having one hand in front of it, you only stand to lose one hand. While they are doing this, the gun captain would be back here with a leather thumb stall on, covering the vent at the back of the gun. This is where the explosion initially starts. Uh, and this is so that none of the gases and, and embers are going to blow out the back of the gun. All right, and you can pull that sponge back out and put it up here. All right. And next you want to take the rammer down, because our next command is load cartridge. So while the 16-inch guns on Battleship New Jersey use 660 pounds of powder in six bags, Constellation is using a nine-pound powder charge, which would be in a silk bag, same material as New Jersey uses. Uh, the nine pounds of black powder would come in a wooden box and would be brought by one of the ship's boys, the powder monkeys. Uh, it's still light enough that one of them can carry it. The bag is made out of silk, or in some cases, heavily treated flannel, because it will burn up almost entirely on firing. And that's why New Jersey still uses silk in her powder bags. After we've loaded the powder, the next command is to load the shell. So the powder monkey would bring another wooden box with the eight inch uh, exploding shell, and the fuse would be cut to the right size. Uh, it would already be fitted on its round wooden Sabo base, and then given to the loader, loaded in the gun, and then pushed back using the rammer. The fuse on the shell will be lit when the powder goes off. And it is uh, set based on uh, the gun captain's judgment for the range that he's expecting to engage. These guns have a range of up to a mile and a half. Uh, realistically closer to a mile for any sort of accuracy. My nearest target is the World War II submarine Torsk, less than a quarter mile away, so we've got a real short view set today. The next command is to run out the gun. So in this case, I'm going to need one of you on each of the side tackles. <laughs> Reaching tackle is removed, and now you guys are going to pull, and it's the same action halt. You should be standing on the outside of the lines, only the gun captain would be on the inside of the lines here. All right, so action, haul, action, haul, action, haul. It's very important that the two uh, sides move together, or else the gun will start to swing one way or the other, and that causes more work for me later. Action, haul. Action, haul, action, haul, almost there, we're going to take it all the way to the ball cap. Action, haul, action, haul, action, haul, and one more time, action, haul. All right. So now we have run the gun out. This way when we fire, we're not going to burn the side of our own vessel. All right. The next command is to aim the gun. So right now we are pointing at the stern of Torsk. She's close enough that we can pretty accurately aim. And I think I would rather hit the sail where she's commanded from. So. Take hand spikes like this one, put them into these little staples in the back of the gun, and then move the gun into position. While European ships tended to train to fire into the rigging to disable an enemy ship and capture it, 
American gunners were trained to fire into the holes of enemy ships, ricocheting off the water, uh, and even firing while their own ship was on a down roll of a wave and an enemy ship was on an up roll to hold the enemy below the water line. So, now the gun is loaded and aimed, the next step is to prime the gun. Uh, so first you would take a long brass needle, we're using brass because it doesn't spark when it hits iron, uh, and we're going to punch it into the vent hole, and that's going to open a hole in the powder bag directly below. Then we're taking a primer, uh, which in this case is a uh, goose quill, part of a goose feather, that's stuffed with fulminate of mercury. Uh, that, again, burns up entirely. That goes into the vent hole, that's what will set it off. And the fulminate of mercury tends to explode when it is percussed. In this case, cocking this hammer will create the percussion to set off that goose quill. Up on deck with the parrot rifles, we use a brass primer. The army tends to use brass primers. Uh, when the gun fires, that brass primer, here's one, this one's been spent, it would have a ring that comes out the back that you would tie your lanyard to. Uh, when that is spent, it explodes out of the top of the gun. That's fine up on deck, but down here on the enclosed gun deck with 14 guys around and uh, a brass primer hitting off of a low overhead, they're likely to take out a sailor's eye. And my only way of aiming this gun is the very complex fire control system, the Mark I human eyeball. Look down the barrel, if there's a target there, I can hit it. Uh, obviously, if I damage that fire control system with a brass primer, I become a much less effective gun captain. So, now we're ready to go. So, the next command is ready. And that is basically telling everybody, drop the lines you're holding. You don't want to be holding those when the gun recoils back in. It'll be yanked out of your hand, you'll get rope burned. Uh, and step away from the back of the gun. I am standing in a very bad place if this was a loaded gun, because when this recoils, uh, it's basically uh, a ton and a half, the weight of a car, and it comes back into the ship at about 30 miles per hour. Uh, so I've never been hit by a car going at 30 miles per hour, but I can imagine I wouldn't want to be. So on the command ready, I'm going to stand back. Notice that the wheels project out the side of the gun, and I want to make sure that I'm not going to be run over by them. Uh, the gun captain takes the lanyard, and everybody's covering their ears and opening their mouth. We're in such an enclosed space that the percussion of nine pounds of powder going off, which is roughly 36 times the powder inside of a firework, uh, when that goes off, it's not so much a sound that you hear as a shockwave that goes out that you feel in your chest. Uh, so I'm going to bend my knees, get on the balls of my feet so that that shockwave isn't going to drive me into the overhead. I'm going to open my mouth uh, so that I'm not going to bite my tongue or drive my, my uh, teeth together. Uh, and it's going to keep my ears from popping too badly. And I'm covering my ears so I can't hear it. And the final command, of course, is fire. Yeah. Make ready! If you would like to participate in a gun drill like this, this is one of the hands-on activities done on Constellation. It's done during the overnight program, and it's done during uh, daytime tours of the vessel. If you would like to see one of Constellation's guns fire, these are fiberglass, but there are real guns on board that do fire. Also, if you would like to support the uh, museum, Historic Ships in Baltimore, we've put a link down below for where you can support them. Have you ever participated in a gun drill on a ship like this one? Let us know in the comments section down below. Also, let us know if you have any questions about what we've just done today. And um, remember, we're trying to produce new content almost every day of the week. Like, share, and subscribe so you're notified when we're releasing it. And I'll see you next time.